if you spend any amount of time on YouTube whatsoever, you're probably aware that there is just a crap ton of stuff about false teachers and, you know, oh, they're not really from God, and they are from God, and all this different stuff. And it, it's a little bit overwhelming, um, it, especially if you don't, you know, know the Bible really well. So, I mean, who would start there? <laughs> don't expect YouTubers to um, grow your faith for you. You have to grow your faith. With that being said, you know, I, I think there's a real danger here because a lot of the YouTubers, the Christian YouTubers and apologists and whatnot, they're just really super too quick to condemn based on somebody that they don't know. And uh, sometimes they'll even like kind of twist what they're trying to say just to make them into a false teacher. No, I'm not saying that they do this with everybody. You know, like, um, well, Joyce Meyer is a good example of this. Does she say good things? Yeah. And is she a person who's easy to like? For the most part, yeah. Sometimes she th says things that I think that was a poorly delivered line, but you know, whatever, it's personal taste, I guess. But overall, I would say that she probably is a false teacher because she teaches, you know, the whole little gods thing. And, and she, the thing is, she doesn't even necessarily know that she is teaching this. I think she just needs instruction. That's, that's I think, the big issue there. And But the problem is, if you're going to be a teacher, especially one that's televised, you really need to make sure what you believe and then say it very clearly, um, you know, because of that. There's numerous sermons that I've listened to of Joris Meyer that I thought, oh, that's not biblically sound. Um, it sounded good and, you know, whatnot. But So I would say overall, Joyce Meyer is probably, probably could be considered a false teacher. Now, a false teacher on accident, but still a false teacher. I would also say that there's a difference between liking somebody and them being a, a, a true teacher. It's easy to like someone. In fact, oftentimes false teachers, you like to like them. Maybe sometimes they have charisma or they just, you know, uh, they talk to you in a way that finally you understand. And, I mean, that's totally totally normal to connect with people who, you know, uh, are kind of meeting you at your level. But that doesn't make what they're saying true or right. <laughs> and so that's, I guess, the first thing I want to say about false teachers and false messages is that YouTube is kind of known as just being a real condemning place. The Christian community is like, they're a false teacher, and they're a false teacher. It's like the opposite of Oprah. So um, it, maybe maybe don't let the YouTubers do all the thinking for you. Um, so we're going to look at, in a, in a couple different parts, we're going to look at how to tell if a message is really from God. Because you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of people, especially in the charismatic movement, who will say, oh, I got a message from God, or this is a message from God. And I'm actually going to take you through a real-life false message that was sent to uh, to me. And, um, you know, being a pastor, you encounter these kinds of things all the time. But I thought it would be worthwhile to kind of break it down and say, okay, so you get this message that somebody says it's from God, and I don't want to blast from God. How do I really know if it's from God? That's a good question. Uh, and so we'll, we'll look that apart. And we'll, I mean, we'll take that apart and kind of look at it. And... Uh, but in this first part, I don't really do want to talk a whole lot about um, how to tell if a message is false or a person is false. I just want to talk a little bit in the opposite direction because sometimes there's just so many different YouTubers who are, oh, well, they're a false teacher and that's a false message. And, oh, let's, let's slow down, okay? Let's just calm down here. Um, not everything is false, okay? Um, the, 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 I don't know how else to say it. Not, not everything is false. There are some things that sometimes, especially televan televised pastors do, that is probably not the best of ideas. And one of those things is quoting something from a source that is questionable. But this in and of itself doesn't make someone false. And I actually saw numerous um, Christian apologists on YouTube who were condemning this guy. Um, the guy was Stephen Furtick. Now, I'm not saying that Stephen Furtick is not a false teacher. That's not what I'm saying. Actually, to be honest, I'm not familiar enough with this stuff to know. But what I was watching with this video, they were they were condemning him and all of him and all of his church because he quoted a source that was, um, well, it it was a weird source, if you know what I mean. Like the the, the source was was um, not biblically accurate. There's a lot I could say about the source, but I'll kind of save you the boredom. My point being, he quoted this because it helped to validate what he was saying. Now, obviously, 
probably not the best idea to quote some something that, that is questionable. But with that being said, not thinking through your sources doesn't make you a false teacher. It just means that you're not great at research. So Stephen Furtick isn't great at research. I know a lot of pastors who aren't good at research. I know a lot of pastors who aren't good at presentation. Sometimes they say things that sound like some things that that's not really what they're trying to say. In fact, my pastor does that frequently. Like he'll say something, I'll say, you know, I kind of made it sound like you were saying this. And he's like, well, that's not what I meant at all. And I think that if you listen to what I was saying, then and I was like, well, yeah, I, I, I get that. But at the same time, if he was a television pastor, he would be condemned outright that, you know, um, what he's doing is, you know, he's, he's spreading a false gospel. And it's like, well, that's not what he was saying at all, you know. And so some things, sometimes things can be misunderstood. So, you know, make sure you're actually hearing what the person's saying. And then make sure that um, just because they're quoting a question source, that doesn't make them false. Um, the next thing is saying something that's not true doesn't make someone false. And you might say, well, whoa, hold on. That's actually the very definition of, of false. Well, hold on. Let me explain, okay? Everyone makes mistakes. And you might say, well, as a pastor, yes, I understand that. I understand. Why don't you go be a pastor for a little bit and see that sometimes you say things you don't mean to say. And you, you, sometimes you, like, accidentally say something that's just not really on target. You say something, and you're like, oh, that sounds right. And then afterwards, you start thinking, about it, you're like, no, 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 that's not right. And here's the thing. Well, you should study harder. Yes, I understand that you should study harder. I get that. But everybody makes mistakes. And the only people who aren't making mistakes are the people who are sitting at home making YouTube videos about how everybody else is a false teacher. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, if you preach for long enough, eventually you're going to say something that is just, it's not true. Now, the problem is, is so nobody's a false teacher. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying at all. How frequently does, does the person say something not true? And do they really mean the thing? <laughs> You know what I mean? Um, uh, some pastors, not knowing, might not know that Jesus was still fully God. And, well, let me, let me say that differently. There's kind of this Pentecostal thing going on that the Holy Spirit is what made Jesus able to, um, you know, to do his thing. Basically, he wasn't sufficient in and of himself. He could only do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. Mike Winger talks about this a lot, and uh, I've, I've talked about it a bit relying heavily on Mike Winger's lectures, actually. But, uh, see, you might not realize that that's not true. And I would say, yes, you should probably study before you start getting into teaching. Yeah, absolutely. But there's always blind spots. There's always areas that you're going to miss. And everybody's going to have times when they're preaching and things just, you, you mess up. So the first thing you need to look at for a false teacher is, do they teach something regularly? Did they mess up one time in saying something that wasn't totally on? And was the thing that they said that was off, was it a big deal or a little deal? So a big deal would be like, Jesus is the only way to heaven. We are not good enough. We will never be good enough. We are not God. Nothing we do will ever make us God. Um, you know, things like that. Those are big deals. Now, then there's small deals. Small deals would be like, excuse me, arguing about, let me think, let me think of something real quick, okay? A small deal would be like, what kind of clothes they're wearing. That's, that's not really that big of a deal. What kind of music they're singing. It's not overly a big deal. Unless the music is like downright heretical, it's really not that big of a deal. Now, heresy's a heresy is a funny thing. See, sometimes people see heresy in everything, and so you kind of have to have a little bit of wisdom when this is going on. But the basic idea here that I want you to get is when you're listening to a, a teacher, if, if they mess up one time, that doesn't make them a false teacher. This is not true one time. It's not really making them a false teacher. Um, the Bible has to be 100% spot on all the time, right? But Christian pastors uh, are not, they, they mess up, you know? Um, and obviously that brings up questions, well, what about the people who are prophesying about, you know, Trump being reelected in uh, 20, what year are we in? 2020, and that it didn't, didn't come to be? Well, most of the time, mostly they're false teachers. 
Not not all the time. Sometimes, you know, you get confused and you get kind of caught up in the bandwagon. But keep in mind that the sign of, of a prophet is that what they say actually happened. So if somebody is giving a prophecy, supposed prophecy, and they're saying this is the word of the Lord, they need to be extremely cautious in is that actually from God? And um, I'm a little bit stricter with prophets than I am with, with teachers because, you know, it's easy when you're trying to teach something and you're trying to articulate things. Sometimes between here and here, it's just hard sometimes. But prophesying isn't like that. You're not coming up with something. You don't have to, you don't have to think of all this different stuff. It's God tells you to speak and then you speak. So either God is telling you to speak or God is not telling you to speak. However, sometimes people can mislead themselves. Sometimes they can be misled. Sometimes they can influenced by negative sources, obviously, like demons and whatnot. And it's not always so easy to figure out, can someone who loves God with their whole heart give a false word? That's something that is, that's something that's worth considering. You know, is, is, is that something that nobody who's called by God will ever mess up? See, I believe that Jeremiah, all of Jeremiah's recorded prophecies are they are from God, okay, every single one of them. Is it possible that Jeremiah could have given a word that was not totally on, that was not recorded? You know, I don't know. I don't know. And I'm willing to say that I'm that I don't know. You know, um, sometimes we kind of get in this. I have to be this solid. You know, I have to know everything. And that's not the way. That's just not the way it is. Yeah, definitely not the way it is. So, you know, I hope that that kind of helps. You know, not everything is false. Not every time that somebody messes up, is it false? But you need to put a little bit more, more, more time and effort into that, you know. Now, so Stephen Furtick quotes this guy who's not a good source. Okay, that's, that's not a smart move, but it doesn't make him a false teacher. So then he says something along the lines of how um, we can, we can be better or something. That's not necessarily denying God's grace. That's more talking about, and for your audience, especially, I, I deal with a lot of drug addicts, for instance. Um, yeah, you, 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 you need to learn how to try. It's not all up to God. Like, oh, uh, today I just don't feel like getting high, so it's all God's fault. Like, no. Like, there comes a point when you have to say, look, I, I want to change. And if you've ever dealt with drug addicts, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, if they're not ready to take the step, then it really doesn't even matter what you say or what you do. Like, they have to be willing to do that. And you can say... Well, you know, they're just not depending on God's grace. But it's like, well, that's kind of sounds like somebody who's never really dealt with a drug addict or, you know, ever really been addic addicted to stuff. Like, yeah, you do have to rely on God's grace for salvation. But there also is a point when you have to take a step and say, yes, I choose to act. And see, what we do is we get our denomin denominational things involved in the conflict. Like, oh, well, we're either predestined or not predestined. It's like, well, the Bible does still tell us to obey, to take courage, to do something, right? So... It, why would the Bible tell us to do something if every single moment and every single decision was predestined? Like, that's just stupid. So we get caught up in our own little denomination, and then we start putting on, like, all these different teachers and stuff. And that's just not smart. That's just not smart. So, you know, be careful with just throwing out, they're a false teacher, and they're a false... Uh, slow down with that. Slow down with that. Um, you know, um, a false teacher is someone who teaches you to worship other gods, including yourself. A uh, false teacher is someone who denies Jesus as Lord, truly God, holy man. These are false teachers. Um, false teachers are, are people who deny what the Bible teaches. They, they teach against what the Bible teaches. Um, maybe they teach, you know, that you don't have to um, live as different from the world. Maybe they teach you don't have to live as holy, all these different things. Yeah, but here's the thing. There's a lot of things that can be misunderstood to be that and not really be what they're talking about. So, you know, there really has to be some wisdom and discretion with this conversation. And I think that's that's the really big thing that I'm trying to get at. Because YouTubers go to this extreme. Everybody's a false teacher. And I think that, you know, you don't have to go to the other extreme. And nobody's a false teacher. But surely there's some kind of a middle ground where you can say, okay, look. Yeah, he messed up. He shouldn't have said that. I mean, Bill Gothard. I appreciate a lot of his teachings. But there's a lot of things that he said and done that I'm like, yeah, that, that wasn't a good idea, Bill. That, that, that wasn't a smart thing that you did. Um, I... Personally, didn't feel like there, like he really. Um, there was a couple years back where Bill, Bill Gothard was being accused of some stuff that he was, he was, it was dropped. They, you know, nothing really stuck, no proof of any of it. I, I really didn't feel like he had done that. Um, I deal with a lot of troubled, troubled people, troubled teens, 
um, the pastor over me does too. And there's a lot of times when when you're dealing with uh, troubled elements that they can kind of just claim stuff and lie about stuff and see something that's not there and just say, it's hard. If you've never done it, let me just tell you, it's hard trying to figure out how to how to connect with them and how to help them, but also how to, you know, because you have such high hopes for them that they're going to turn a corner and, that, you know, and so then you try and let them know, hey, I believe in you. And then at the same time, it's like, but that doesn't mean I want to have sex with you. Like, the, it, it's hard. And then if they come from like kind of a, an abusive situation where like maybe even a father was involved in things that he shouldn't have been involved with, you know, um, in, in, in relationships with people that may be, you know, abusive and whatnot, they kind of start to see it everywhere. And so then it's, it's, it gets hard. I'm not saying nobody is, nobody is, nobody is, what's it called? Nobody, uh, no mentors do things inappropriate. That's not what I'm saying. But I, 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 I do know that, you know, when you're dealing with the troubled element, things happen. And so, yeah, there's a lot of false stuff out there. And you really want to be on your guard. The best, the best course of action is to read your Bible and pray and get involved with some good, solid teaching. Typically, you're not going to find good, solid teaching on um, televised preachers anyways. Sometimes there's exceptions, but mostly that's not really what you're going to find. Um, so, you know, especially if you're new to the faith or you've been in the faith for a long time and you haven't grown, really watch out for, you know, getting under somebody who's just a whack job, like Bill Johnson. Bill Johnson is a great example of a whack job. Like, if you watch his videos, like, th that guy's just that guy's just a wolf. Like, you gotta watch out for these kinds of people. Their their books are nonsense. They talk in circles on their on their stuff. You know that's a sign of a false teacher right there. So, uh, maybe get involved with some some spot on teachers, and uh, go from there. Uh, I always tell people, look, you know, there's there's a YouTube channel here. It's called uh, Sheep Among Wolves. Um, they talk about this stuff all the time. Go over there. Um, there's Mike Winger. He's also here on YouTube. You know, go check him out. You know, get get more firm in the faith, and then you'll be able to detect things that are not really, not really on. And then when think when people um, say things that aren't, especially tele telepastors or telepastors, uh, television pastors, uh, say things that aren't quite on, you'll be able to tell ah, that that's not totally true. Like the, his point that he's trying to make is still valid, but that that point that he's he's that sub point there is just not really on. And oftentimes you'll find that that's the case. But then you're gonna find there's other people who are genuinely false teachers. Um, they teach, you know, things that are just not quite, not quite right. Like Bill Johnson. Uh, it's not something that he messed up one time. We're talking about something that this is one of his core teachings. Well, okay. Uh, then, then, then you've got a problem right there. So there's a lot of, um, another thing I want to warn about is that there's a lot of knowledgeable Christians, especially on YouTube. It's kind of becoming a trend. They know a lot of it, about a lot of different stuff. They can, you know, they know everything about the faith and about theology and stuff. And so they're very knowledgeable, and, and but they're they're super condemning and legalistic. And you might say, oh, here's another one of these guys. But here's the thing: when the world says, oh, you're being judgy, that they mean something different than what I mean. What they mean is, um, I can live however I want, and you can't tell me you can't judge me. You can't tell me how to live. And it's like that that, that that's stupid. That's stupid. Like that doesn't even work for the world. There there's judges, right? There's policemen. Obviously, you can't just live however you want. So how much more so in in the context of faith? Like, duh. That's not what I'm saying at all. But. What I am saying is there's a lot of times Christians, especially the, these these newer, like, you know, YouTube Christians, they've kind of forgotten love for people. You know what I mean? And if you have all the answers and you don't love the people that you're talking to, well, I do love them. That's why I talk like this. It's like, no, 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 that's not. Don't, don't do that. Don't twist the scripture to, you know, to validate what you're saying. If you really love someone, you'll hurt for them. Okay? You'll, you'll hurt for them. You know, it's not like, oh, they're going to hell. Oh, well, that's, that's, like, how stupid can you get? Like, that's not love, okay? Yes, if you love someone, you will tell them, you will tell them, you know, what God lays on your heart to tell at the right time and in a wise way. I think those are two two little aspects that Proverbs talks about that people, just, especially the newer Christians, just completely forget about. Like, I can just say whenever and however I want. It's like, no, no, that's just kind of being a fool. So, you know, when you... <laughs> Are just really when you know a lot but you don't care about the people that you're talking to watch out for that um, it's just really a trend right now all these youtubers that, that, that 
know all these things about the Bible. They, they can answer all your questions and all these different things, but they just don't, they don't have love. They're just, they're only con concerned for, for the elect. Like, they're not concerned about the world at all. And I don't see Jesus being unconcerned about the world. You know, I, I don't see it. So th there's there's a healthy line here. You know, stand the line and, and and teach the truth. Don't 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 water down the gospel. But also, you know, maybe try and make it appealing to people. And I don't mean try and make it appealing by like changing the message, but maybe not saying it in such a foolish way. You know. Like I said, if you need sinner, you need Jesus, you stupid sinner. Maybe if I, you know, actually try and connect with people, especially since you know that's typically how people are, are, are saved is you know by you know connection and then decision instead of decision and then connection. Um, you know, there has to be a point where you are still accountable to act like Christ. And being argumentative is not acting like Christ. Going out and trying to start a fight is not being argumentative. I mean, it is not being Christ-like. Going out and, and going through YouTube comments and trying to respond to everything, that's not, that's not being Christ-like. And here's the thing, it's not rejecting Christ to not answer every single stupid thing. Proverbs actually says, answer a fool according to his foolishness, <laughs> and, you know, it won't go well for you. So, you know, maybe, maybe there, there could be a healthier discussion where you realize, you know, those people who are posting those comments, most of the time they don't really care to hear, and so with that, with that, just just bear it. Christ was ridiculed, and you'll be ridiculed too. That's just the way of things. So I, I hope that this this video was a little bit, um, not just instructional, but a little bit, you know, helpful. And uh, the next one we'll start actually looking at a um, at a false word and, and and how what makes it a false word. You know, how do I know that it's a false word? And then the different character traits that you look for, um, because obviously if somebody's claiming to be from God, you know you should, you should definitely look at their at their lifestyle. That's something that Paul talks about. You should look at the content. That's something that Paul talks about. You don't just blindly accept the sinners from God. Just don't just blindly refuse those from God. So, okay, um, that's really all there is for me today. Goodbye.